Hi guys, welcome back. So today, you're going to be watching me rummage through my old garbage. Are you excited? Because I am. <laughs> so I've been saving these empties up for the last five months. I have no idea what's in here, so it's going to be fun. So before we go through them all, I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. I'm going to start by talking about all of my moisturizers I went through. So I'm gonna start off very positively. Look how many of these I've finished over the last five months. This is my all-time favorite night cream now. This is the Biosense Squalane and Omega Repair Cream. This has repaired my barrier so well, and it's actually one of the only products I use in my nighttime routine. Most nights after I cleanse my face, I will just go in with this. I'll skip toner, I'll skip serums, anything like that, and I'll just go in with this, and it's healed my skin incredibly well. My texture has been the best. It's been in years. I don't have as many breakouts because I did really do a number on my barrier and I was just breaking out and breaking out and breaking out because my skin was freaking out and this really helped to calm everything down. I am going through another one right now. It lives on my countertop in my bathroom. It's a nightly need for me. So when I finish the one I'm currently using, I will for sure be repurchasing. I wanted to mention my favorite day cream, which is the Biotherm, which is funny. They both kind of sound like similar brands, Biotherm, Biosance, but this is the Biotherm Sera Repair Barrier Cream. And this is the first barrier focus product that I used and it healed my skin so much. This was at a time my morning and my nighttime moisturizer, but now I like to go in with something a little bit more thick, but this is my favorite day cream and it wears incredibly well underneath foundation or makeup. It kind of reminds me of a classic moisturizer and a gel moisturizer hybrid. It has that texture, but it's a bit more hydrating than a gel one would be. It leaves a bit more glow, but I really, really love that, especially in the winter time. And it also was amazing during the summer as well. It was just fantastic. I will for sure be repurchasing this. I'm planning on waiting out for the VIB sale. <laughs> Another one of my favorite moisturizers for the daytime is the Summer Fridays Cloud Dew Oil-Free Gel Moisturizer. This one, I don't like it as much as this one. This is definitely on a pedestal for me, but this one is still pretty fantastic, especially when my skin has been a little bit more on the oily side. I like to use this more so in the summer as well. It'll moisturize your skin beautifully, keep you feeling hydrated, but it won't feel or look dewy. It'll just sink right in and it's a perfect base for us oily folk. <laughs> I'm working through one right now. It's actually been the moisturizer I've been using in the mornings while I wait to repurchase this guy. This is a moisturizer I like to have on hand, but it's not like my absolute, absolute favorite. The next moisturizer I went through is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. Now, I believe that this one was just too thick for my skin. It didn't really make my skin sensitive, nor did it really make it break out. I just didn't like the way it felt, and I just felt like my skin didn't get along with it as much as other ones I just mentioned. So halfway through this one, I decided to use it on my arms just to finish it up because I, I passed the point that I could like, give it to someone else. That's kind of gross because I stuck my fingers all up in there. Weird, so I just used it on my body. But yeah, I would not repurchase this one. It did not work for me, sadly. Although I really wanted to because I know this one is like the recipe for magic for many people. And the last one out of my moisturizers, I think, I think this is the last moisturizer I went through, is the Youth to the People Adaptogen Deep Moisture Cream. I really like this one. It was one of the moisturizers that made a big difference in the beginning, but I just kind of forgot about this one as time went on. I prefer the other ones I was just raving about more as well. I just, I don't think I would repurchase this one. I enjoyed its presence one time and one time only. But now let's get into cleansers. I'll start off with cleansing oils, cleansing balms. So this one from Youth to the People was probably my least favorite cleansing balm I've ever tried. I don't know if I got like a weird one or what. Let me know if this was your experience, but this is the Superberry Dream Cleansing Balm. I was so excited about this. Plus it's my favorite color. I love this kind of lime green, but this consistency was so annoying to work with. It was almost pasty. It almost felt like a pasty dough and you'd have to like really dig your hands in there and it took a while for it to melt and I felt like it wasn't that effective at removing my makeup. I would need to use quite a bit. Like whenever I would start with my initial clump, I would need to grab another one to really melt it down. And it was incredibly messy because it was so pasty and crumbly. It would get all over my countertop and on the floor. 
so I would just use this one in the shower but I I just kind of gave up on it halfway through I got so pissed off with it <laughs> that I just started to use it as kind of like a swatch melter whenever I was watching like liquid lipsticks or heavier swatches that I needed to involve a cleansing balm with I would not repurchase this one I did not like it. The next cleansing oil I finished was this Shu Umera Skin Purifier Ultimate Sublime Beauty Cleansing Oil. This has been a favorite of mine for many years and I love how big of a bottle you can buy it in because I just feel like I'm never running out and it took me so long to finish this bottle. This is my favorite cleansing oil. I'm more into cleansing oils than balms, I believe, especially these days. I love how they come in pumps so I don't have to like stick my hands or stick a little thing into a cleansing balm. I like how I can just pump a little bit more and if I need a little bit more, I can get another pump. It's just a lot easier and I love how it's already melted and I feel like it does a quicker job and I can control the product more. I find that I use less than I do a cleansing balm. I don't know, it's interesting. I've made a self-discovery, but <laughs> yes, this stuff is incredible. It just slips your makeup off so quickly and it's really great at getting all types of mascaras off. It's such a thin consistency. It just really gets in there. It emulsifies really beautifully as well. And that's when you add a little bit of water to the mix. After you've been massaging your dry skin with just your makeup on it, you incorporate a little water and it'll turn a little bit milky and that will really help to lift off whatever's on your face. It does that beautifully and it rinses off really easily and it doesn't leave anything behind. It just feels like your bare skin. As you can see, I'm a big fan. So those are my first cleansing steps. Now let's go in with my second steps. First starting off with a classic. I think this has been in every empties video, but I think I'm actually going to be taking a break from it just because I think I found something I like a little bit more, which is crazy. But this is the Fresh Soy Face Cleanser. This has been a favorite of mine for many, many years, and I do have quite a few backups of it, so it's not going anywhere in my collection just yet. It does have a really fun texture. It's kind of like a jelly texture, and it does wash your face beautifully while leaving your skin feeling moisturized. It's an awesome cleanser. It was the first one that didn't feel like it overstripped my face. My skin didn't feel like squeaky clean after washing it in a good way. Like it felt clean, but it wasn't like, ur, ur, ur. you know, it's lovely but I'm kind of infatuated with these ones here. <laughs> the one I'm so in love with that has made such a huge difference in my life is this CeraVe Acne Foaming Cleanser. It has 4% benzoyl peroxide gel, which this is that product that will kind of bleach your towels if you use colored towels. So if you're gonna use this, get a white towel to dry off your face. But this one is fantastic. It cleared up my skin. It keeps my acne away for the most part. I know I try a lot of products out, but it keeps me in check. I'm going through another one currently, and this is a product that I will be repurchasing for here on out, I believe. I am so in love with what it does for me. These next two cleansers I find to be quite similar, but this is the Rovectin Skin Essentials Conditioning Cleanser. This is the first cleanser that ever felt like I was actually conditioning my face while washing it. I don't know, it was a complete new experience for me when I was washing my face. And when I started using this, I felt like this was going to be my new go-to, but actually I believe it's going to be this one. I felt like I went through this quite quickly. Besides using this one a couple times a week, it became my go-to number one cleanser. Usually I jump around a little bit, but this one I was just so in love with it. It's the Defense Barrier pH Cleanser from Purito. I, I was never, I never heard about this brand before until I received like a beautiful box full of Korean skincare. But this was one of the things that really caught my attention just because of the name Purito. It sounded like burrito and I love burritos and that's why I started using it. And then I really fell in love with the actual formula of it. It's really nice because it has a pH of 5.5. So it's very gentle. It's perfect for sensitive skin, oily skin, and it also has this centella extract, which I'm not entirely sure what that is, but it's in a lot of the skincare products that work well for me. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research about that, <laughs> but it's been amazing. It does have that thicker consistency, just like this one did. It has that conditioning feeling, just like my favorite one over here did but it just does so much more for me. I felt like it got along with my oily and more sensitive skin type so, so well. Uh, so this is one I'm for sure going to have to find. I don't even know where to buy it, but it's going to 
be purchased again by me. <laughs> I have some more skincare products here. I'm just gonna kind of jump around. But now I have a toner. This is from First Aid Beauty. It's the Oil Minimizing Toner with Salicylic Acid. I have been kind of stepping away. Oh, I guess there's still a little bit. I think that might be water because I rinse out everything. Um, I've lost my train of thought. I haven't been really using any exfoliating acids because I find them to be a little scary to me at the moment just because of the number I did on my barrier <laughs> the last couple of years. So I've just been taking a step back. I won't be repurchasing this at the moment, but it did really help to calm my acne down when I was dealing with a lot of that, but it also impacted me negatively because I was exfoliating it even more. <laughs> so I finished that a long time ago, so I don't know how it works on my skin lately. I just, I don't have a good vibe about it right now, so I won't be repurchasing it. Next up, I have the Tower 28 SOS Daily Rescue Facial Spray. Now, I was highly addicted to this product at some point. It did fantastic things for my skin in the past. It disinfected my skin, it just helped with redness and helped with clearing up acne. It did all of these amazing things, but I got so severely addicted to this that it started to impact my skin negatively because I was overusing the thing. Everything in moderation, guys, right? So I've just recently started to implement it back in my routine because I bought so many of these in the past. I have mini sizes, medium sizes, and the huge big daddy version as well. I still have all of that. I just went cold turkey on it, not doing good things to my skin. So I've just recently started to implement it back into my routine. I just use it once in a while when I feel like I want it. And it's been good so far, but I feel like I'm on a rocky road with it. I don't know where it's headed, if it's going to be good for me, bad for me. So I'll keep you updated. This is an unknown thing for me at the moment. And the last skincare product is this Belief, the True Cream Aqua Bomb Sunscreen. This is my favorite SPF. I'm kind of surprised there aren't more in this, but I did go through kind of a discovery phase. I wanted to switch up my SPF after my phase with the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. I tried out a bunch this summer, so I, it makes sense because I just used up a little bit of each and then I landed on this one and this is what I've been hooked on for a while now. It feels just like you're applying a moisturizer. It doesn't feel like a sunscreen in the slightest. There's no white cast. It's a really thin texture. It blends in very quickly. It doesn't sting my eyes. It's amazing on my oily skin. It doesn't break me out. It wears perfectly under makeup. It just checks all of my picky boxes I have for SPF and I haven't looked at anything since. Um, the only problem is that I believe this is still a US only product, but thankfully I'm going in a couple days here, so hopefully I'll be able to run to Sephora or somewhere that sells this and stock up because I don't know what I'm gonna do without it. So now let's move away from skincare. I finished a little thing of my vitamins. I finished more, but I guess I just started collecting these last month. I didn't clue in, but this is the Ritual Essential for Women multivitamin. And I wanted to mention this because these are my favorite vitamins because they don't upset my stomach. And I love how they're coated in like a minty flavor because I cannot stand normal vitamins how they taste, like the essence, once I put them into my mouth, I gag. And that's why I became extremely inconsistent with taking my vitamins. But that little minty essence flipped me around. I have these every day. <laughs> so I wanted to mention that one quickly. I have one makeup empty, and that is my Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. This is my all-time favorite setting spray. I don't often use setting sprays, um, but when I do, it's this one. I just sounded like that beer commercial. <laughs> oh my god. Dossi kist. Anyways, favorite setting spray. This just does what hairspray does for your makeup. <laughs> Incredible. I have surprisingly only one body cream. I'm terribly inconsistent with applying body cream. I sometimes get so lazy. I go through phases where I'll be like perfect for a week and then I won't touch it again for like two. Help. But this one I finished because it smelled so delightful. This is the Summer Friday Summer Skin Nourishing Body Lotion. I wish this thing was way bigger though. I felt like I did finish this quite quickly. It smells like summer. I'm not going to be repurchasing this until summer comes around again, but this is one of the most beautiful body lotions ever. It just makes you feel silky. It's such a soft texture and I love the consistency. It's not too thick, not too thin. It's almost gel feeling, but just a little bit on the thicker side and it just like glides 
rinse over your skin so easily. It does not take a long time to apply it to your whole body. And that might be why I finished this one. I get impatient with it. I have like 10 body moisturizers I'm going through right now. I can't decide which one is my favorite out of those, but I would say that this one is really high up on the list. It is phenomenal. Now let's get into the last section, hair products. So I wanna start off with my shampoo and conditioner. I'm actually still using my shampoo <laughs> of this. This is the Redken Acidic Bonding Concentrate. I just wish that their shampoo and conditioners were way bigger than this. I find that I finish them way too much. So that's the only reason why I'm actually not going to be repurchasing this. But other than that, the formula was incredible. But I'll show you what I have been using as my shampoo and conditioner instead of this. Buying shampoo and conditioner has always been annoying to me. So I've been using these. <laughs> from Costco, the Kirkland Moisture Shampoo and Moisture Conditioner. This is actually a dupe of something way higher end. I forget what it is, but it's fantastic. It's also sulfate free, it's vegan, paraben free, gluten free, all of those things. And it does such an incredible job at washing my hair and conditioning my hair. This is the best shampoo and conditioner I think I've ever tried. And I just love how they're so big. I use one of these each a year. Like hello, thank you. Goodness. This just makes my hair feel so soft and nourished and hydrated, but it doesn't make me feel oily. And then they're also color safe. So everything I want in a shampoo and conditioner and in huge bottles. <laughs> I have a hair mask here. This is the Coco and Eve Like a Virgin Super Nourishing Coconut and Fig Hair Mask. I loved this one. I just left it in my shower. I used it as my conditioner once in a while. I wash my hair around two times a week, so I'll use it on my second wash. I'll try to apply this near the beginning of my shower, so while I'm washing my body and shaving my legs, this can soak in for a long time. I also like to use this for longer periods of time as well. It's really hydrating, really nourishing, and it also smells really, really good, but they recently came out with a newer one. It's like an all pink packaging. I currently have it in my shower, but I've only used it, I think once or twice as of right now. So I wanna see how I feel about that one compared to this one. So I don't know if I'm going to repurchase this yet. I'll see how I get along with the, with the new guy, but this one was pretty amazing. So that one has a lot to live up to. I always like to go in with like a spritz in leave-in conditioner or a heat styler or anything like that. And this one, hits all of those boxes. This is the Redken One United All-in-One Multi-Benefit Treatment. And this says that it does 25 things. I just read it again, and it kind of gets repetitive, but it does a whole lot. Protects my hair, hydrates my hair, keeps it more manageable. It does a lot. So I did repurchase this one time and I got the Big Daddy version. This is kind of like, I guess, the regular version. And it also helps to detangle my hair and keep it from tangling throughout the day. With my extensions, I need to baby them so much, so I always put in an obscene amount of conditioner and an obscene amount of oils and everything like that through them because they don't produce their own oil. So I have to baby them even more so they don't break all the time. And this really helps to keep them looking healthy and shiny. And the last product here, I actually went through two of them over the past five months, which is pretty good for dry shampoo because I use this almost on the daily. This is the Moroccan oil dry shampoo. I use the dark tones one. It's my all time favorite dry shampoo. I've tried so many out there. I never like them as much as I like this one. This one truly makes my hair feel clean. It has like the thinnest powdery feel. It doesn't feel grainy. For Moroccan oil products, although I'm obsessed with the scent, it's not too heavy. Because when a dry shampoo is way too heavy, I get headaches real quick. But that doesn't happen with this one and I just love how thin the powder feel is in my hair. It just renews it and makes it feel like I just washed my hair. And because it does that, I don't need to use this every day. So I'll use it on day two and day four. I don't have to reapply it every day that I don't wash my hair. And those are all of the empties I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's empties video. If you did, please give this video a like. And I will make sure to list all of these products in the description down below. So feel free to check that out and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Thank you.